Hey everyone, Gio here from Phantom United. Welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you had a great 4th of July weekend. Whatever you did, let me know in the comments below. This is daily news recap for July 5th. And as you can see on your screen, we have a number of topics. And we're going to start with uh, the sad news of the day, the breaking news. And that is longtime Hollywood filmmaker Richard Donner has passed away at the age of 91. Donner died Monday, according to his wife, Hollywood producer Lauren Schuler Donner, and his business manager. There is no cause of death as of this recording. Donner leaves behind an incredible legacy of films as a director. Obviously, he did Superman 1 and 2, movies that forever changed the genre that is comic book movies. Uh, Lead the Weapon films, he did four of them with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. That also changed the genre that is buddy cop flicks. You had The Omen, Lady Hawk, The Goonies, Scrooge, and Maverick. Not only was he an incredible director, but also a producer, producing credits such as The Lost Boys, Free Willy, Any Given Sunday, and Brian Singer's X-Men, another movie that's a landmark in the comic book genre. Here is a quote at the bottom that reads, In Motion Pictures... The actor rules, the camera serves the actor, and that couldn't be any more true as I read some statements from longtime friends and collaborators of Richard Donner. The first one comes from Mel Gibson, who says, Donner, my friend, my mentor, oh, the things I learned from him. He undercut his own talent and greatness with a huge chunk of humility, referring to himself as merely a traffic cop. He left his ego at the door and required that of others. He was magnanimous of heart and soul, which he liberally gave to all who knew him. If we piled up the good deeds he did, it would stretch to some uncharted place in the firmament. I will sorely miss him with all his mischievous wit and wisdom. And here is Mel Gibson's co-star in the Lead the Weapon movies, Danny Glover, he says, working with Dick Donner, Mel Gibson, and the Lead the Weapon team was one of the proudest moments of my career. I will forever be grateful to him for that. Dick genuinely cared about me, my life, and my family. We were friends and loved each other far beyond collaborating for the screen and the success that the Lead the Weapon franchise brought us. I will so greatly miss him. Fellow Hollywood director and friend Steven Spielberg says, Dick had such a powerful command of his movies and was so gifted across so many genres. Being in his circle was akin to hanging out with your favorite coach, smartest professor, fiercest motivator, most endearing friend, staunchest ally, and of course, the greatest goonie of all. He was all kid, all heart, all the time. I can't believe he's gone, but his husky, hearty laugh will stay with me always. Marvel Studios producer Kevin Feige also released a statement saying Richard Donner not only made me believe a man could fly, he made me believe that comic characters could be brought to life on the big screen with heart, humor, humanity, and verisimilitude. Above all, he taught me that it can and must be done with respect, caring, and kindness to everyone in front of and behind the camera. Dick and Lauren became mentors during my early career and key supporters throughout the birth of the MCU. I owe my career to the way they took the time to nurture and teach a kid from New Jersey who didn't know how to use a fax machine or make coffee very well. I always thought Dick was immortal. I still do. My thoughts are with Lauren and the entire family. I also want to take a moment and point out that, look, you don't see Marvel and DC fighting okay they pay their respects they acknowledge greatness that's what this channel is all about okay bringing geek culture together and right here is a prime example of that fellow superman director zach snyder who of course did man of steel took to twitter and wrote thank you richard donner you made me believe short but sweet you know it's amazing to see all of hollywood come together both the veterans and newcomers and give love and support for a icon, uh, an icon in Hollywood. I will be talking more about Richard Donner going over his entire filmography this Sunday on Fandom United Live. We're going to have a whole 60 to 90 minute discussion dedicated to Donner 
his movies. I will have a fellow guest join me and it'll be a fun conversation. So if you want to hear more about Richard Donner and join the conversation, check us out on Sunday for Phantom United Live. But let's move on to another topic. This is more of a rumor, but it is so effing exciting. Cue the music. Here we go. Earlier today, and late last night, Hugh Jackman took to his Instagram and posted several stories that got us all thinking. Will Hugh Jackman appear in the MCU? Is there an opportunity? The longtime superhero actor gave us a bittersweet send-off in 2017 with Logan, but it appears there may be an opportunity for Hugh Jackman to return albeit maybe a cameo or a small appearance in the MCU. Here we see on the far left, he reposted an artwork from Boss Logic showing adamantium claws coming out of his fist. And then to the right, Jackman followed up that art with a photo of Kevin Feige and himself. I don't know exactly when this was taken, but to do back-to-back story posts of that, it tells me, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, Hugh Jackman will appear in the MCU. Now, what movie exactly will he appear in? Well, there's a number of movies coming out. It's not going to be Shang-Chi, obviously. It's not going to be Spider-Man No Way Home. I think that movie will feature not one, not two, but three Spider-Man. So what movie could it be? What movie is coming out to where, I don't know, a multiverse could open up? And you could see all different types of characters make appearances. And that movie is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Now, there are so many rumors to talk about in regards to this movie. I've heard things like maybe actors who were supposed to play these major characters could be making an appearance, such as Tom Cruise as Iron Man and John Krasinski as Captain America. It's a possibility, but a movie like that also presents the opportunity for some other iconic characters to make an appearance. There's Wesley Snipes' Blade, and also Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. If this happens, you can almost bet it will be in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. What kind of role will Hugh Jackman have? I'd imagine at the very least it's a fun cameo, but who knows? Ryan Reynolds has for the longest time been asking, he's been lobbying, he's been begging Hugh Jackman to play Wolverine one more time. We know Ryan Reynolds is working with Disney on a Deadpool 3 in the MCU at some point. Could this finally be our chance to get Deadpool and Wolverine on the big screen, even just for one scene or one small moment? That could be pretty damn cool. You guys let me know your thoughts. Maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but this tells me we're going to see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I'm not going to go as far as guarantee, but I'm pretty effing confident that this will happen. If I'm Kevin Feige, there is an opportunity here with Multiverse of Madness to do some pretty strange things pun and uh toby mcguire's returning as spider-man would be one thing hugh jackman as wolverine which we all know is on kevin feige's wish list would be insane i mean imagine seeing that in one of the trailers oh my god all of a sudden multiverse of madness becomes an event movie like spider-man no way home You guys leave me your thoughts. What do you think? Could this happen? This is crazy. But speaking of John Krasinski, who I mentioned as somebody who maybe could show up in Multiverse of Madness, he commented on the possibility of playing another big character in the MCU. He had this to say about the rumors regarding Fantastic Four. He says, I would love to do it. I think to be a part of the Marvel world would be amazing anyway. And the fact that people would even consider me for that level of a part would be amazing. I generally have had no conversations or don't know anything that's happening with that. I'm waiting on Kevin Feige's announcement of what the hell is happening with that as much as you are. 
It's so interesting because I'm such a huge fan of Marvel. I think they do their own. I think they have such a great formula. I mean, yeah, I jump in there and Kevin, I trust that dude is not only the most talented guy, but the nicest guy, whatever he wants, we discuss it. And fans for the longest time have been asking for Marvel, for Kevin Feige to cast John Krasinski and his wife, Emily Blunt, as Reed Richards and Sue Storm in the upcoming Fantastic Four movie. We know it's coming. It's been hinted several times. We saw it in the Marvel Loves the Movies trailer where they pretty much just reconfirmed that their entire Phase 4 slate, as far as movies go, will be in theaters. So we heard Emily Blunt a few weeks ago say on the Howard Stern show that she doesn't think superhero movies are for her. And it would have to be something really special for her to consider being a part of. Well, what's more special of you and your husband playing two prominent members of Marvel's first family and a fun project? We know they're going to pay them handsomely. Marvel's going to cough up money to get these actors. And right now, Krasinski and Blunt, they're on fire with The Quiet Place Part 1 and Part 2. I think this happens. You guys, let me know your thoughts. Does John Krasinski's comments give you any more confidence that this is happening? I mean, it definitely should. He seems all about it. But let me know your thoughts down below. And now we're going to move to a topic that is, I mean, this is a controversial issue right here. And I'm going to bring it up because yesterday was Independence Day, the 25th anniversary and it's a movie that's widely regarded to have made the career of Will Smith. It brought him into Hollywood, and it made studios recognize him as a bankable box office star. But it wasn't always that way, according to writer-producer Dean Devlin of Independence Day. While celebrating the 25th anniversary of the movie, he had this to say about fighting the studio over Will Smith's casting. They said, you cast a black guy in this part, you're going to kill foreign box office. Our argument was, well, the movie is about space aliens. It's going to do fine foreign. It was a big war, and Roland really stood up for Smith, and we ultimately won that war. It was pretty shortly before the shoot, and we still hadn't locked in Will and Jeff. I put my foot down. Universal people are calling me every day, so give me these two actors or I move over there. I don't think it would have been a possibility to actually move studios, but it was a great threat. And you know what? Say what you will about Roland Emmerich as a Hollywood filmmaker today. I mean, I think his best days are behind him. Him For him to stand up for Will Smith, who at the time was known as a Grammy-winning rapper and a comedian in the Fresh Prince sitcom in the 90s, for him to stand up for Will Smith like that, that's pretty effing awesome. My respect to Roland Emmerich. And as far as, you know, Fox Studios and them not having faith in casting a black lead. Look, I talked about Ray Fisher countless times on this uh, channel and his, uh, you know, drama behind the scenes fighting with Warner Brothers. And it's, it's, it's nothing that you cannot dispute or doubt. Hollywood has had this problem for the longest time for as long as. Uh, films have been made in Hollywood. This has been a huge issue. And studios not having faith in actors, minority actors, for them to be bankable stars. And that's been proven wrong time and time again. Whether it's a Will Smith, whether it's a Denzel Washington, a Mahershala Ali, so on and so forth, a Michael B. Jordan. Ray Fisher could have been one of those guys for Warner Brothers with Cyborg. I'm always going to take the side of the filmmaker, whether it's Edgar Wright leaving the MCU, whether it's Will Smith and um, producer Dean Devlin and director Roland Emmerich standing up for him. I'm going to take the sides of the filmmakers nine times out of ten. So if you want to think that this is not an issue in Hollywood still to this day, you go on. You believe what you want to believe. It, I'm just sharing my opinion. You can share yours as well. But this is another reminder that some of the biggest stars that we know today, at some point in their careers, they may have been discriminated. They may have been wrongfully thought of. And you know what? It's pretty messed up. Hollywood is a messed up business. I don't know that because I'm not in Hollywood. But from what I read, from what I hear, from what I see, 
I mean, how could you not, how could you not think that that stuff doesn't go on in Hollywood? Um, it's pretty messed up. And um, you know what? They turned out to be wrong again. Will Smith made Independence Day what it was, his character. And it makes me even more happier that Will Smith decided not to return for the sequel because that sequel was a pile of dog shit. But that's going to do it for this episode of Daily News Recap for July 5th, 2021. You guys share your thoughts down below on some of these topics. Before I go, I want to plug a few of my videos that I did a couple weeks ago. Part one of Batman The Long Halloween spoilers review is currently up on the channel. You can check that out if you're a fan of DC animated films. I also have my Fast 9 review on the channel, F9, The Fast Saga. You can tell by my facial expression how I felt about the movie, but check it out. I will be watching The Tomorrow Award tonight on Prime Video and having a review for that shortly. Also, if you're a new viewer, please do subscribe and hit the like button. I would appreciate that. Monday through Friday, I will be doing these daily news recaps. I enjoy it. I get to talk about things that I'm excited about a lot quicker and you get news faster. But that's going to do it. I hope all of you have a great rest of your Monday. I'll see you tomorrow with another daily news recap. Until then, take care.